Welcome, everybody, to a special edition of All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast brought to you by NorthJersey.com and the USA Today Network. It's draft night here at MetLife Stadium, and first off, I want to thank the Giants and MetLife Stadium for allowing us to be here. We are recording our podcast live here. It's a big night for Giants fans, and no reason to delay any further. Hopefully, you're watching this on NorthJersey.com's page on YouTube or Facebook or on our website. But we got fan questions coming in on Twitter, and we're going to have some guests. And my first guest is here, so without further ado, John Schmelk of the man of many hats over at the Giants. But the podcasts that you've done have been incredible, including the Giants Huddle podcast, tons of draft uh, content, Thanks for joining me, man. It's a busy night. Yeah, I feel like if it's a Giants podcast, I have to make an appearance on it. Otherwise, I'm not fulfilling my contractual duties. You know, That's you mentioned right. the Giants huddle. We also have draft season, uh, Big Blue kickoff. We're live tonight uh, after the Giants make their pick. So check it all out. Artists, and I'm happy to be here to talk draft. It's the last time to talk about the draft is it starts at about an hour. So. I feel like this is a little <laughs> bit of a bookend because you had me on back at the Combine. In yeah, Indy, that's right. And we were supposed to do a return trip, but we never were able to do that. And now we do it on draft night. I think it's great. Let's jump right into it, John. What are you, what are you feeling going into tonight? It's a strange feeling for me because for the last 10 years, we've only done this once where the Giants were picking outside of, you know, the top 12 or 13 picks. I'm anxious to get it going. I also feel like I wish I could have watched those extra five or ten players that I didn't get to. I probably got to well over 100 this year, which I was happy about. But there's always more where you can say, all right, I wish I would have got to a couple more. But I do think this is one of the more unpredictable drafts we've seen. We're usually have a pretty good feel. I mean, right now, probably I have a good feel for maybe what a half dozen teams will do, maybe, before the Giants pick. And yep. the rest is it's kind of a mess. And it's a lot different than what we've had with the Giants the last 10 years, to be quite frank, Art, where you're picking between 1 and 12. You know, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen in 24 picks. So fans keep asking who the Giants are going to pick, and my answer invariably is, well, who's left on the board? Right, and, that, and that's really the thing that it comes down to. I have a pretty good feeling for guys I know they like, sure. uh, guys that I, I believe they fit, but it's a matter of are those players going to be available when they pick at 25 uh, let's let's go through the position groups a little bit because you and I have talked about that previously. I've listened to your podcast. I know where you're at. Uh, I think corner and wide receiver is kind of the pressure point there, starting at 21 with the Chargers and then moving on right up to the Giants. That that cluster of teams. How do you see it playing out from what you've you know heard and seen? Yeah, look, I, I think fans will say oh of course wide receiver corner those are the needs and yeah those are the needs but it's more than that that's also I think where the talent is in the class when the Giants will get to 25 because you can say oh yeah center too but I don't think you're getting value at center at 25 100% and, I agree and, with and you. Joe Shane has talked about valuing not so much this year because I think he's trying to be a little bit more low-key about what his intentions are right but if you go back to his initial interviews from last year talking about the importance of premium positions and targeting those in the draft because you can't find them in free agency. Yep. Either they're not available or they cost too much money. Yep. Well, you know what? You can go find the best center on the market, pay him less than $10 million a year, and you're going to be fine. You, you know what you can't do that with? Wide receiver and cornerback. Yeah, and that, and that's and and really the, the positional value but also premium spots. Yep. You're also getting defensive tackle, as we see with – the contract that Dexter Lawrence is going to sign up, at some and up, point. And up, and up, and up, and up, and up, and up. And then edge rusher. Yes, you picked Kayvon Thibodeau last year. You have Aziz Ojolari. But if there's an edge rusher that you like and you can get him at cost control for four or five years on a rookie deal, you make that move because that's a position that if you're going to hit market and expect to pay market value, you're paying through the, through the roof for that player. My sense also, though, and I agree, I think you can find an edge rusher late in that first round if you want to. Maybe a guy like Brian Branch drops, right, who right. is a really good player. Uh, he's I have 20 guys with first-round grades. He's one of them. So, you know, he can play corner, he can play safety, inside corner, not necessarily outside with his 4.58 uh, speed. But I think when I 
look at how the Giants have operated this offseason, how they've allocated their resources. Look at the contract to Daniel Jones, Saquon on the tag. They bring in a large volume of wide receivers to try to help the passing game. They trade a third-round pick, which is a valuable pick for Darren Waller. Yep. You just paid your quarterback a lot of money. And we always talk about quarterbacks being the product of their surroundings. Well, you don't think they want to make that investment look good right? and have Daniel Jones play as well as he possibly can. And by the way, I'm kind of making a joke because that's how you win games in the league too. Right. If you can't score points, you're not going to win games. And Giant fans, if you haven't looked at the opponents next next season, it's a little bit different than the ones this past season. Just look at the quality of the quarterbacks that are on your schedule. And it's you're going to have to score 30 points more than once the entire year right. if you're going to want to win games again and get into the postseason. So my guess is that the focus is going to be trying to get people around Daniel. And then, to your point with the cornerbacks, you're playing a lot of great passing offenses this year. You're going to have to cover Adore Jackson last year of his contract. And then who's after that as a right. long-term answer? I don't think there is anyone there. So I think that's what you're looking for. Weapons for your quarterback help stop opposing passing games. Yeah, I think there's, there's no doubt about that. You mentioned Brian Branch. The two guys late in the first round that I think if the draft really goes – uh, haywire and the Giants don't have an opportunity to get uh, a corner or a wide receiver that's at the top of their board. Branch is certainly one of them because yeah. they, they'd almost look at him as a weapon on defense and not necessarily just a safety. They can move him around. I think he's a defense. supercharged Julian Love. He's yeah. a better version yeah, of what Julian Love was. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've seen the top shelf comparison is almost like a Minka Fitzpatrick and I sure. think that's why yeah, that's fair. you know because of the Alabama ties and, and the way that is but another guy that I'm interested in in that edge group is kind of a Miles Murphy from Clemson I'm interested to see because he seems to be that kind of guy who they'd want to bring in that defensive front you play him opposite Thibodeau you let Ojolari play a little bit more on the passing downs maybe you have that opportunity yeah, and, um, and Wink, by the way, has like bigger edge guys in the past. Right. And they don't have that bigger edge rusher that's not Jihad Ward. You right. want a bigger guy that can affect the quarterback, and I think Murphy would be that type of guy. Right. So we'll keep this con uh, this discussion going. If you're watching, we appreciate you watching. If you're not, what are you doing? Get over to the YouTube channel, NorthJersey.com, uh, or the Facebook page, or even if you check out our website. I'm Art Stapleton. This is John Schmelk with the Giants. And we are here live at the Coaches Club in MetLife Stadium. It's a Giants draft party with a Giants pick at 25th, probably around 10.45, 10.30, maybe 11 o'clock. Advice, get pushed. pace yourself tonight. You're yeah. going to have to wait a little while. Pretty much. So when we do this, and hopefully this is the first of many that we do on draft nights, we come in here to the coaching Coaches Club, and then we can have fans in here. It's obviously a late arriving crowd. People are trying to get here, but they're also planning for a later night. So uh, if you're here, if you're in the Coaches Club, you hear us, you have any questions as far as the Giants draft, where they're at, you want to tell us your story about being a Giants fan, being a season ticket holder, come on over. We'll take your questions. Uh, John and I are here. John will be here until around 725, 730. I'll be here up until 745. Then i got to head out across the parking lot over the Giants facility. And that's our art. One of us have annoyed somebody here at some point. <laughs> if you want to come over and yell at us, too, that's fine. We welcome that. Now, come get a little all-in swag. We got some <laughs> stickers you want to put on your laptop. If you're in, uh, in high school, you still have lockers. I don't know. I just turned 50, so I'm not sure. If you still have lockers in high school, but this is pretty good. Come and get some. Yeah. Come and get some swag. You got some some NorthJersey.com swag. Uh, we'll keep building it. The more people you watch this show and keep listening every week on all your podcast platforms, the more swag we can get and put out for you guys, uh, so you can enjoy the show, promote it, and be be out there. So uh, let's talk, John. Um, as far as Shane and like you said I felt the same way is that it was a you know it's a small sample size for what Joe Shane wants to do uh, and how we judge him but last year was pretty cut and dry I mean I don't believe he's looking at a center on this board and saying we gotta get him at 25 it's just it doesn't fit as to how he's built his reputation here so far and or I'm just gonna look at it from a logical perspective Last year, if you asked anyone who the top centers in the draft was, 
98 out of 100 people would say Tyler Tyler Linderbaum. Well, if you ask people this year who the top center in the draft is, you're probably cut 50-50 or maybe 40-40-20 between Joe Tittman, John Michael Schmitz, and Luke Whipler from Ohio State. Or maybe Steve Avila, who has some center experience, too, in, in 2021 at TCU. So unless you have a guy that stands out so much at that position that you know he's going to be a Pro Bowl type player and there's no question of who the best one is, then maybe you would consider that guy end of the first round. I just don't think you have that player this year. Gotcha. All right. Well, we're here. We offered up for people to come on over and ask questions, and there are people coming to ask us questions. So awesome. step up to the mic, Saquon Jersey, tell us uh, what's your name, where you're from, and what do you got? I'm Gavin Farmer, and I'm from Auburn, New Jersey. Uh, just glad to be here. Gavin, you said? Yeah, Gavin. Welcome, welcome here, Gavin. And obviously, uh, how long you been a Giants fan? How old are you? My whole life, pretty much. So I'm 17 years old, and uh, my grandpa had season tickets for uh, for forever since the old stadium. And uh, when he passed, he passed it on to us. So uh, our family goes, and I've been going since I was a little kid. I love it. Well, awesome, awesome thoughts for your grandpa. And obviously, uh, you're here tonight. What's your, what's your question? What are you thinking about the draft? Where, where are we going? We go receiver? We go in corner? Offensive line? Where, what are you thinking? Well, like John and I were saying, it's a lot easier to predict when you're picking five and seven what player is going to be on the board when you're there. Uh, I think the two premium positions, and I think we're in agreement, for the Giants is corner and wide receiver. Now, I don't know where they have these guys lined up. To me, I think Jackson Smith and the Jigba will be off the board uh, at least a lot earlier than any of the other receivers. I think you're looking at Zay Flowers, uh, Jordan Addison from USC, uh, and another guy, John, I don't know how you feel. I I don't know how to get a read on Quentin Johnston from TCU. Yeah, and I think that would be the fourth guy. I'm not sure they would dip into Jalen Hyatt territory with that pick. He has the speed. I'm not sure I'd pick him that early. I don't know how they feel about him. You know, Johnston's a weird mishmash of traits. I think, yeah. you know, the whole build a basketball team of your wide receivers, you want small guys, medium guys, big guys, right? Well, I think Johnston kind of fits into that equation. They don't have a guy that can be a true X-type receiver. Yeah. And he has good athleticism. His ceiling is high, but he has some issues catching the football, and he doesn't make as many plays down the field on contested catches that you would like for a guy that's 6'3". But he's awesome after the catch. So yeah. I think you see the promise. He can become a really good player. And I think of all the receivers are mentioned, he's the guy most likely to be there when the Giants do select at 25. So that might be where they end up. Because I think, based on everything I'm hearing, I think the league is very high on Zay Flowers as a guy and a receiver. I yeah. think he's probably gone. I think you got an off chance at Addison. And I think you might get wiped out of corner. So... Any chance of a trade? Maybe some uh, Stephon Diggs. I hear some rumblings. He's been active on Twitter. You know what? If there was any team that would look at the Stephon Diggs situation that would know what's going on in Buffalo, it'd be the Giants, right? Yeah, I mean, Joe Shane yeah. and Brandon Bean are very close. Uh, I, I don't think Diggs is going to get traded. I, I mean, if you're the Bills and you're where they're at, why are you trading away your number one offensive weapon on the team? I mean, I know there was a lot of frustration at the end of last season. But when you look at that contract and the investment they've made in him, uh, Buffalo has to, would have to have something else working, in my mind, to say we're going to trade away Stephon Diggs and still think that we're going to compete not only in the AFC, but now you have another number eight that's going to play in MetLife Stadium at quarterback and Aaron Rodgers that I think the Bills have to look around. So I'm not buying the Stephon Diggs or even the DeAndre Hopkins talk for the Giants just the way I see it. Well, they also don't have, for a guy like Hopkins with the salary cap, I just don't see how that's feasible for them. I do think, you mentioned a trade, and I'd like to get your opinion on this too, Art. What if they're sitting there at 25, and you mentioned, I think, those three or four teams right before the Giants could pick a wide receiver or cornerback, right? Right. If someone's sitting there at 20 or 21 or even 22, like Baltimore only has five or six picks in this draft, they're going to want to add picks. Would Joe Shane be willing to move a fourth rounder? maybe a third round there and get something back to move up three or four spots if one of the guys that he really wants is sitting there. I think I think that's possible. I would not rule that out. Yeah, and I agree. I agree. I think that's kind of the trade that you might be looking at, Gavin. Uh, also a trade moving off a receiver. I think Joe Shane is very comfortable being a wheeler and a dealer. You know, we didn't. We saw it a little bit last year, but he talked a lot about last year, the comfort level he has 
with his reputation he's built in this league. He could pick up the phone and call a lot of general managers in the days leading up to this draft and have the confidence that whatever they're talking about is not going to leak out. You know, that's a big thing when it comes to the draft. It's not only with being willing to trade, but it's also being confident enough that if you talk to someone honestly and say, you know, we're looking for this spot and this, what would you do if this guy is on the board? They happened with the Jets last year. The Giants and the Jets made that deal. The Jets ended up trading, uh, picking Brees Hall. And that was under, under wraps. Nobody talked about that much. I think Shane is kind of confident that way. Let me ask you, uh, great question, obviously. We're glad you're on. I uh, hope you listen to the podcast, and if not, you you will now. Oh boy, yeah. uh, but you're wearing Saquon's jersey as a fan. I know he's probably one of your favorite players. Give me your – take the temperature of, of a Saquon fan. What do you feel right now as far as what's going on? I mean, it's really, really hard. I mean, how many teams – you look at the Super Bowl winners just over the past five to ten years. I mean, very rarely do you have, like, a highly paid running back on a team. But if you look at last year, uh, I mean, we second round in the playoffs, and our offense basically lived and died by Saquon Barkley. You know, you had guys like Hodgins get hot at the end, and obviously we just made a big trade for Darren Waller. But at the end of the day, uh, our our offense lives and dies by the rushing attack. So it'd be very he's he's not a guy you can replace, but it's it's also hard to pay running backs. I'm very conflicted. Uh, and that's completely understandable. I do think what's important though, and and look, it could change, but Joe Shane has been pretty adamant and so is Brian Dable and ownership, they want Saquon on this team. Now, they want him on this team at their price, and once the tag was placed upon him, kind of gave them the hammer a little bit, and I think they'll use the hammer a little bit uh, by the summer, I think by the July 17th deadline. I think you'll see even before that, maybe after the draft, you'll see them, both sides kind of get together again and see, look, have we changed priorities here? What are we looking for? Um, So... It'll be great, but, you know, thanks for coming on, Gavin. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for it. having me. Appreciate it. And nice to meet you guys. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Make Gavin. sure appreciate you keep it, hitting us up on Twitter. That's right. and everything. Hey, I'm just glad we're picking at 25 and not top five. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so, John, we got a, we got a question here from, uh, from our website, I guess it is. Nice. Uh, from YouTube. Tim Houston wants to know, he says, Hi, guys. Always a pleasure hearing you. On Big Blue Kickoff Live, John, and then you on All All In Art. Checks in the mail, Tim. Exactly. Uh, we'll send it to Houston? Maybe? Yeah, sure, maybe, uh, yeah. Uh, do you think we'll target a center a lot later than expected and go for best player available first three rounds? You could take this first. Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know if you're going to get a plug-and-play center outside of round three. I think the last guy on the list is probably Ricky Stromberg out of Arkansas, um, and I think he's probably an end of third round, beginning of fourth round type of guy. You might be able to get him in the fourth, and you might be able to swing that, but I think if you wait outside the third round – that's not going to be draft this guy to start him. That's going to be draft this guy and see if he can beat out the Bredesens and Lemieux and guys like that. Yeah, I think third round is where I'd target uh, the center. You know, it really depends on what they do at 25 because I, I like the the wide receiver combo, 1-2. Uh, That's how I, I would like it if you can get the guy you want. You know, I had in my last mock, I had Deontay Banks from Maryland falling to 25. I don't think that happens. I did five mocks for NorthJersey.com, four of four in which he was gone. Yeah. Uh, so he was there the last time I took him. And then I ended up going Marvin Mims in the second round from Oklahoma, wide receiver. But I would say that, um, you know, John Michael Schmitz, I think he's outside of the range of where maybe the Giants will look I'll for I'll tell you, though, if Schmitz and Tittman are sitting there in round two, Art, that, then it that's is, a different conversation. I, I really do think it matters who's on the board yeah, in absolutely. that spot. You know? So we got our next guest here. So we're going to do a, a, a trio here. And those of you who watched the draft last year, I don't care if you were Giants fans or fans of the NFL in general or even non-football fans, the guy we have next to John was one of the stars of the NFL draft in 2022, Sam Prince, and if you recognize him, he got to introduce Kayvon Thibodeau to the Giants fan world, to this fan base. Sam, you're a lot more than a guy who just announced a pick. Thanks for joining us. You've been on the podcast before. Thanks for coming, man. Of course. Thanks for having me. Happy draft to everyone. I know. It's great. Did, 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 did Kayvon have that jacket made up for you? That's nice, man. I like it. 
Thank you, thank you. He did not have a bit up for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, you got the chance to spend some time with Kayvon uh, in, in the off season, right? You were out, out in California? I was. We did a workout together. So how'd that work out? You make him feel a little foolish with your workout? Yeah, just, just a little foolish. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> well, listen, Sam, I know you're a huge fan. You're also a podcast host. You're at... You know, tell me about what you're doing now, what your year has been like before we get into our draft talk. My year has been wild. I've just finished up my freshman year at Rowan University studying sports, communication, and media. Right now, this summer, I am going to have an internship with the De with the Wilmington Blue Rocks. The Wilmington Blue Rocks are the single and uh, the high A affiliate of the Washington Nationals. I'll be doing their pre and post game shows on the radio. Of course, I'll be here at training camp, and I have an internship with Foul Territory. It's a new baseball podcast, being a social media producer. Awesome, Sam. I mean, it's amazing how your year, uh, it's been crazy. I mean, uh, when you consider last year, every, everything you've gone through to get your wish, to make a wish last year, to be able to, to be out there on, on the big stage in, in Las Vegas, how, does, how different does it feel? Do you have a little, little feel of FOMO? Not being on the stage this year out there in Kansas City? No, R. It's a little, it, it, it is a little weird for me not to be there because I'm thinking to myself, oh, at this time I was doing this, at this time I was doing this. But I'm just grateful it happened. Now, you last year when you had the picks ready to go, first off, you, you I remember you telling me that you told John Mara that he had a draft cave on Thibodeau. So John and I would like to know, since we're – Trying to figure out, did you stop by Quest? Did you stop by Quest? Talk to John Mara and tell him who they should take at 25. Unfortunately, this year I did not talk to Mr. Mara. Told him who they had a draft, but if they still want my advice, they know where to find me. So what do you got? They're listening right now. I know in the brand new Giants draft room, they have us up on their TVs. They got us ready to go. They're watching what we're saying. Who does Sam Prince want for the Giants at 25? Well, Mr. Mara. If you guys stay at 25, you don't do a trade up, trade down, you're there. No trades. Gonna draft quarterback Joey Porter Jr. Okay, that's an interesting one. And he might be there. I, I've heard he might be dropping late in the process. And, you know, I, I said Deontay Banks. It's interesting. Emmanuel Forbes from Mississippi State. I've heard a lot linking him to Washington. Washington, yeah. Uh, you know, he's 166 pounds, I think. So More of his own corner than a man corner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, Joey Porter Jr., we know the lineage. He was here on a, on a 30 visit. So it could be interesting, Sam, if you, you nail that one at 25. I hope I nail it. And our, those 30 visits, they do mean a lot. I've been seeing... Rubers at the Giants are going to trade up at this draft and make a big splash for Addison or Zay. But also, there was a quote by Jack and Smith Juba, the, in my opinion, who is the best wide receiver in the draft. And if you put him in the league right now, he's a top 15 receiver in the league. Bold, he, he was. Bold. Yes, I know it's bold. He was talking about how much he loves Brian Dable. Yeah. So maybe that big splash is to get JSN, which I'd be very happy about. I think you'd have to jump a, a lot. You, uh, you, you know, do you want to give up your two this I don't, year? I don't think so. I think the furthest year? you you could have to go up is probably 13. So you look like because yeah. I think the Packers could pick him there. I think the Texans could pick him at 12. Yeah, so I, that's probably the area. Looking at 12 or 13 picks, you're looking at your two this year, probably plus something else from next year's draft. Yeah, I mean, and you're also considering ten. There's been a lot of talk about Tennessee. Well, that's it. At, at 11, Tennessee. you're right. So what does Tennessee do? Tennessee might be involved I, in moving up. I think they're going to trade up with Arizona for either Will Levis or Anthony yep. Richardson, but I had to pick one. I think Will Levis fits their offense better than Anthony Richardson as of right now. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Tennessee is a is definitely one of those pressure points uh, in the draft. Let's talk um, – I'm trying to think in terms of – let's talk running back, okay? Because Peter Schrager and I had him on all in on – uh, Tuesday, I think it was. I was yeah, excited to ask you an uncomfortable question, but I think yeah. you're going to do it for me. You're, you're it asking, was, that's the question. It was very good. I mean, <laughs> you know, Schrager has been dropping crumbs the last week or so. Whenever he's mentioned Bijan Robinson of Texas, that he says, oh, he could go as high as eight 
or as low as 25 at the Giants. And social media, there's been a lot of people, Giants fans in particular, why Schrager keep tossing out the Giants for Bijan Robinson, Bijan Robinson. So I had him on on Tuesday. He kind of laughed about it. He loved talking about it. His perspective on Robinson and Jameer Gibbs from Alabama and was that. And that second name will go in the first round, yes. by the way. His perspective was that when you stack up those 20 first-round grades, if those guys are among those 20, do you get to a point if you're at 25 and you're Joe Shane and you don't want to move and you look at those guys as weapons on this team and you say, we don't know what's going to happen with Saquon. We think we know. We want him back. We don't know. Can you fathom a scenario that they would pick one of those two guys at 25? Absolutely not. That is all smoke. There is no way Joe Shane picks a running back in the first round. Why would he do that? The league is going running back by committee. If he would, Saquon would already be traded already. Well, that's that's a, a fair point in terms of, you know, Saquon's here. They want him here. I mean, that that's definitely – I don't think it's gotten contentious. But from what I heard, you know – the Giants have made it known, whether it's directly to Saquon or to, to his representatives or people in his circle, or however you want to throw it around, that they plan on taking a running back at some point in this draft, and they don't want him uh, to be caught off guard at all. Which, now, by the way, it makes sense. They don't have a running back on the roster besides um, the young kid at Arizona State, how Brightwell, signed Brightwell, beyond this year. Right. right. And Jay Sean Corbin, we don't know right. how much they really like him. Well, they put him into a situation where, where he gains stuff, but... What do you think, John? When, it, when you see that stuff, what do you think about about ah. Gibbs? And you know, a couple of people piggybacked off of Schrager and put Gibbs there today in late mocks, yeah, which surprised Gibbs, me a little bit. Gibbs has been noisy. Uh, he's been linked to the Cowboys at 26. He's been linked to the Giants at 25. Uh, I've seen him linked to the Bills in a couple of things as well. I think his people are very busy the last uh, uh, yeah, 48 hours. I think his agents are on the phone. And look, he's a guy you can play in the slot also. He is a legit pass threat. He is a route runner. He's a better receiver than Saquon Barkley is right now, at least in my opinion. You I can, agree. You can use them both on the field at the same what? time. But the Giants have a bunch of slot guys already. So I'm not sure I'd go in that direction. I'm going to throw another question. You can comment too, Sam. If not running back, what happens if... Dalton Kincaid or Michael Mayer have by far the best grade on the board when the Giants get up at 25. Could they go tight end in the first round? Well, did you see who was hanging out over here a little bit earlier? I did not. Uh, well, there the, goes Daniel Jones oh, out to the stage outside. So I'm sure people will enjoy that out in the, out in the fans. Let's see if we can grab Daniel. Not likely. I think that might have been Darren Waller. That was, was Darren Waller Waller behind him. Yeah, and so honest. Daniel Jones and Darren Waller here. <laughs> because that's what I wanted to hear. Hear me asking if they're going to draft the time. Yeah, well, you know, we it's told him. Uh, you know what? Uh, I got to be honest. I got a text from Daniel, uh, and he wanted to come on, but I told him, "Look, I already booked John and Sam, so we're not. Maybe, maybe next week we can try to work it out." Well, well, Daniel did pull me aside today and ask me if I would step aside for him, and I said, "No, I won't." No. Well, the Daniel I was actually talking about was Daniel Bellinger, who will be signing autographs for fans, I believe, here in the coaches' club. Saw him walk by when we started it. I don't see them picking a tight no. end. I mean, me look, neither. By the I way, I think no, they like no Daniel way. Bellinger a lot, and for good reason. And why ahead. would you trade a third-round pick for Darren Waller if you know you're going to draft a tight end? Well, that's true, too. I mean, Waller might be a little bit more of a unicorn. You know, you may look at uh, Michael Meyer and say he has a different uh, skill set. You know, we can put him in. But I think there's some duplication with Bellinger in that situation. No, there and, is. Uh, you know, look, I, I can't argue if you're just going to get pe best player available – you don't know what's going to happen a year from now. You don't know what's going to happen two years from now. So if he's that high on your board, you know, you make that splash. I don't think that's happening. I don't think, um, I don't think they're going tight end either. Uh, let's talk, since this show is tonight, when we look at this weekend. You guys know tomorrow is usually my favorite day of the year because not only do we have Friday morning where everybody wants to talk about can they move up for anybody early that's left over from the first round. John, I know you gotta you gotta bounce for your responsibility, so we'll, I'll get to you first. Yeah. Then if you want to bounce, and then Sam and I will finish up. Sure. Uh, is there a guy tomorrow that you're not expecting them to be on that first round, but that you go to bed tonight saying, you know what, this is my guy tomorrow that. 
they got to do what they got to do to get him. It's a good question. If they don't go wide receiver, Marvin Mims might be somebody you keep an eye on there in round number two if they maybe have to move up for him. I love him. If they don't go receiver, he's got juice to him now. He can yeah. run. He's fast. I don't know if there's a corner necessarily that I would move up for. I, DJ Turner maybe if he's sitting there well into round number two, you would think about that. Yep. I'm a big Darius Rush fan out of South Carolina. I think I like him more than other people. I think you could wait for him at the end of round two. I don't think you'll have to move up for him. I mean, we talked about John Michael Schmitz or, or Tippmann. I think those are two guys you keep an eye on at a need, and I think value does meet need there at the end of round two yep. for those two specific players. Those are the guys that I would probably point to the most. If you're looking for a bigger wide receiver and Mims is off the board, you kind of get into that Cedric Tillman, Jonathan Mingo, A.T. Perry group. Yep. Yeah. I think you maybe think about those guys in round number two. Cedric Tillman, too, from Tennessee. Ooh, yeah, yes. yep. Tillman, Mingo, and Perry are the three kind of bigger receivers that could be second-round picks. So I think those are the guys that I would think about in round two, depending, of course, on, on what they do in round one. John Schmelk, Sam, before we, we continue, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. No problem. Let's get a hand for John Schmelk. Yeah. And uh, right, I'm gonna give, slide out. Give me a quick, give me a quick rundown of yes. what you guys coming up this weekend. Absolutely. Uh, so Big Blue Kickoff Live. That's our daily call and show on Giants.com. 12:30 to 1:30 Monday through Friday. Uh, we're going live after every pick uh, Thursday and Friday night. So as soon as the pick is made, Giants YouTube page, Giants.com, the Giants app. Uh, we'll go live for about a half an hour. We'll react. Sean O'Hara, Paul Dottino, and I, we will take calls as well to get fan reaction. Wow. And then uh, on Saturday, after the end of the fifth round, we're going to pop on and do an hour show taking calls from fans as well. So, again, check it out on all your uh, giant platforms, and we will be there for you. John Schmelk, thank you very much. Thanks, and I'll Art. see you over at the good facility you, in a little bit. Be good, guys. Enjoy. Thank you. As we set up, let John go. I want to thank everyone for being here. Those of you in the audience here listening, it's been a great, great stop. We've got about 15 minutes left, so Sam will sidle next to me. If anyone has any more draft questions, you want to come on up and ask them. We'll see what we can do. Oh, we got online questions. Okay. What do we um, got? All right. What do we got? All right. Uh, Tim, Tim Houston's back with another question. Is there any credence in Saquon or Big Cat Leonard Williams being moved in a trade tonight? Uh, I, go ahead, you go. I don't think I see a Saquon trade today. If it had to be one of those two, it would have to be Big Cat. But, you know, there are rumors that Big Cat would restructure his contract for Dexter Lawrence to stay. And Dexter Lawrence sitting out of camp, I, I don't think any of them are getting moved. But if I had to pick one, of, it would be Big Cat. Yeah, I don't think a trade is happening uh, with either one. I think Joe Shane's comfortable. Look, we know the salary cap hit is is high for Leonard Williams, but we also know that when you look at what they have at defensive line, they're trying to build a strength this year. They're and taking away one of your better players. I think they still value Leonard Williams. Uh, I think there will be a situation where they try to restructure to lessen the salary cap hit based on his what he's being paid this year, which I think is. Uh, around $18 million, so that's not necessarily uh, as high as the salary cap. Things that have happened over the last couple of years, the restructures have kind of set up what that salary cap looks like. So I think Leonard Williams stays. Uh, one more question, then we got some questions in person. Uh, some guys are lining up. Thomas Wolf wants to know, do recent signings preclude picking Mozzie Smith? Stop the run, priority number one. Uh, I don't think it prevents them from making any picks along the defensive line. I do think it's important, Sam, to talk about Joe Shane mentioned at the Combine that rookie interior defensive linemen have come in the last couple of years, and it's been harder and harder for them to produce unless they're at the top of the draft. So I think Mozzie Smith is a sleeper there, especially if the Giants trade back from 25. I, that's also a possibility. I'm all for trading back. If your guy's not there, don't reach on a guy. Yeah, so Thomas, I definitely think that Mozzie Smith would be in that next group, next tier of players. I've heard that the Giants do like him. Uh, they believe they can get more out of his game in terms of a pass rushing ability, uh, similar to what they did with Dexter Lawrence. Now, certainly not to that level. Not trying to make that comparison yet. Uh, but, uh, yeah, good name, interesting name. Haven't mentioned him. He may be one of those guys, like I asked earlier, that you wake up tomorrow morning and he's still on the board and you'd say, 
boy, do they make a move up to try to get a player like that. So thanks for the question. All right, we have some fans here who have some questions. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves? My name's Cash. Um, and I'm Colson. Colton? Colson. Cash. Cash? Cash, and say your name one more time. Colson. Colson? Yeah. Colson and Cash. All right, well, Cash has got, is that an old school Sterling Shepherd jersey? Oh, that's I, awesome. I was going to say maybe a Dominic Kickson, but that's old school Shep. And then is that uh, Thibodeau? Yeah. Nice no, Thibodeau. No, it's not. My bad. It's not? No. It's not. Kerry Collins? Oh, Weatherford. Oh, Steve Weatherford. Yeah. Now that is good. That is a great one. All right, well, guys, what are your questions? What do you got? Come closer to the mic so we can all hear you. Don't be, don't be nervous. Don't be You're sure. good. No, you don't. No, you don't. Um, I don't know what to ask. You don't know what to ask? Oh. Who's your player? Is Weatherford your favorite player? Um, my favorite player is Saquon Barkley. Saquon? Yeah. How my, about you, Cash? My favorite is probably Sterling Shepard. Okay, move the mic down a little bit so you guys can get closer. There you go. Go ahead, Cash. Say it again. Mine's probably Sterling Shepard. Sterling Shepard, big fan of Young Shep. He's not Young Shep anymore. Nope. He's Old Shep. He used to have his nickname, but now he's coming up closer to us. What are you guys looking forward to tonight? Are you into into the draft a lot how do you how do you feel are there any players that you really want to see the giants get um, i would like to see jair brown go to the giants ah good pick safety from penn state yeah. uh turnover machine right did they turnover king right isn't that yeah. what they call them out of penn state i think so yeah our our editor dave rivera is a big penn state fan penn state grad big 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 <laughs> Big fan of J Jair, obviously, yeah. uh, and you know I could see him fitting in that in the end of the third round, maybe beginning of third day. What do you think, Cash? What what kind of player do you want? Come up close to the microphone. Well, I don't really pay attention to the draft. No, to the not, not to the draft. So, what did you think about the Giants last year? Were you happy with uh, the new coach Brian Dable? Some of the new players. Yeah. Yeah. What What was your favorite game last year? I like the Eagles-Giants game, but they still lost by a lot. Wow, I was going to say, you're one of the few wearing a Giants jersey I, yeah, that liked that, <laughs> that Eagles game. <laughs> um, so, how old are you, Cash? I'm 11. And how old are you, Cole? I'm 10. You're 10. Yeah. So, 11 and 10. So, essentially, that playoff win last year is the first one that you've seen that you could actually remember and enjoy as a fan. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think? What was it fun? Well, was it fun? Where did you watch the game, um, especially the win against the Vikings? Yeah, that was a good game. I watched it at my house. At your house? What yeah. about you, Cash? Uh, I watched the game at my house. At your house? Cool. Well, do, you, do you guys go to a lot of games? or? Uh, um, no, not really. No, yeah, you haven't been around? I go to a lot of games. You go to a lot of games, Cash? Have you ever been to Met? You're here at MetLife Stadium tonight. Have you been to MetLife Stadium for a game? Uh, yes, I was at the draft party last year. Draft party, and you were here. This is your first time here. Yeah. Are you excited to go out there and kind of check it out and see what's going on? Yes, very. Awesome. Well, listen, thanks, guys. Appreciate you joining us. Let's give a hand to the guys here. All right. All right, Sam. I I think we got uh, another fan. Come on up. We got. got our fans' questions. Again, I'm Art Stapleton. This is Sam Prince. You're listening to the All In Podcast. All In with Art Stapleton, a New York Giants podcast. We're here live. We have everyone watching on the YouTube channel of NorthJersey.com and uh, on the NorthJersey.com website. We will have the audio version of this podcast on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Uh, as soon as we can process it tonight, my great producer, Paul Wood, will get that done. Uh, again, before we get to our question here, I want to make sure that I thank uh, not only the Giants here, Jen Escalante, Carrie Bald, Pete Guelli, everyone for setting this up for us. This has been great. Uh, for my team that's here, I'm not going to rattle off all your names, but obviously uh, Sean's here. Paul Wood is my producer, Dave Rivera, Dan Sforza, and a bunch of guys here. Let's give them a round of applause to put this whole thing together. All right, now we got fan question. What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Jasmeet. Jasmeet, you came. You made it. Now, we had some Giants fans who had logged in here that were going to give questions, and Jasmeet reached up, 
reached out, said he was going to come, and then unfortunately he was in another part of the stadium, right, to be able to get in here. I was in the East Mezzanine, yeah. You are here, and you came. From, so finally made it. What do you want to talk about? What do you got? Oh, I just uh, we're, we're excited. I'm uh, I'm a season ticket holder actually, so. Um, but my main question to you is, what do you think Giants' biggest need right now is? The biggest need, I'll tackle it first, Sam. I, I think in this situation, I think the biggest need right now is, is at corner. Um, you know, I, I do think they believe in Cordell Flott, who they took in the third round last year. I think he has an opportunity to really grow into a position on the outside. I think there will be questions at, uh, in the slot and nickel. I know Darnay Holmes is a fan favorite. He's got a lot of time, but the end of last season, uh, they kind of mixed and matched, so I don't know if he's the best fit for this defense. Plus, he's got a, a bigger cap hit this year, so Darnay's got to come out and, and uh, really have a good camp. So I'd say cornerback is probably the biggest need. What do you think, Sam? Yeah, our, you hit the nail on the coffin right there. The Giants' biggest need by far is quarterback. They just signed Paris Campbell, wide receiver. I think he's, you're not, you don't have your number one wide receiver in him. You have Sterling Shepard come back. And you have Waddale Robinson, who didn't play the majority of his rookie year due to injuries. But quarterback, besides Adore Jackson, it's all question marks. That's true. Yeah, it, it is. I, and, you know, Jasmine, tell me your jersey. I'm looking over. I'm trying to see which jer which jersey you have. It's it's my custom jersey. Your custom it's, jersey. Why'd you pick 84? Is that your favorite number? 84 is actually my my year that I, I was born. Okay. And also, uh, there's a long term history behind it. That okay. In India. Okay. That there was uh, there was a big uh, like a holocaust that was done actually. Oh, okay. Like for for like for the minorities. I got you. So that's why I picked 84. And also, I have a custom name on the back. Yep. I go by the Giant Singh. Okay. On all the social medias. The Giant so, Sing? Giant Sing. Okay. So That's the Giant the Sing is here. Now, did you, uh, did, did we ever meet before? Did yes, you we see? did. It was we on met, the field, right? We met last year on the field, and also I did the uh, flag ceremony at the, uh, for the Commanders game. Okay, yep. Yeah, and and uh, actually, my nephew was doing the flag before the, before the game. I was on the field taking pictures of him, videoing him without him knowing we were uh, covering the game. And then you came off. It was me and, and my cousin. You and your friends. Yep. So I appreciate you coming over. I'm glad you were able to come down. Have Good a great pleasure. night. Thank you. And, Thank uh, you for having me. You know, keep listening to podcasts if you can. Take some swag, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All Thank right. You, Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Let's have a hand for Jasmine. Matt. Thank you. So Sam, it, it, the time goes fast, man. It's 7:42. I gotta, I gotta bounce. We, we promised the Giants we were gonna be here till around 7:45. Uh, again, I want to thank everyone for listening. Let's close the show, and you give me your final prediction for tonight at around 10:30, 11 o'clock. Who do you think is going to be the next Giant to come here and be a part of your favorite team? The next Giant. Gotta, gotta, get the, gotta get the mics right. Yeah. Up, it was going down for all you audio listeners out there. Why don't you announce it for us, Sam? All right. What, you want me to announce it? I'll announce it. With the 25th pick and the 2023 NFL Draft, the New York Football Giants select Joey Porter Jr., quarterback, Penn State. All right, well, a lot of we are's here. Uh, I know there's a we are that they want to get another we are back in the fold here, and that's Saquon Barkley. Well, we'll see about that, Art. Listen, Sam, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Enjoy the rest of the party. Uh, for everyone as part of our team and our, our podcast, I want to thank you for always listening. This weekend, all of our draft coverage on NorthJersey.com, across the pages of the USA Today Network. We will have reaction podcasts as often as possible, planning one for tomorrow off the first round. We'll try to do one tomorrow night if we can. Day two is always fun. And then at some point on day three, we'll see if we could punch one up after that as well. Again, we are the All In with Art Stapleton podcast. And... 
You can find us at all your podcast platforms. We usually post every Thursday. We have weekly podcasts. You can go back and listen to all of our player interviews that we've done for the last two seasons. We are coming up on our 100th episode of the podcast, kicking off year three. That's this summer. Congrats. And we're open to have a special episode live from Giants training camp. I haven't talked to the Giants about that yet, but we'll try to swing that. <laughs> and see what we can do. But again, thanks to everyone here in the Coaches Club. Again, thanks for the Giants and MetLife Stadium for having us. As I say every week, we are all in with the Giants and our coverage. We appreciate you being all in as well. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you over the weekend.